All right, the day has come to discuss the solution to the oscillating rod. I first want to go over with you over the general differential equation that always leads to a simple harmonic motion. When you have the second derivative of x, and I indicate it with two dots, which means d2x dt squared, plus a constant, constant times x, if that is zero, then x always varies in a sinusoidal or a cosinusoidal fashion. I arbitrarily chose here the cosine. So x of t is then the maximum value for x, we call that also the amplitude, times the cosine of 2 pi divided by capital T times little t. Little t is the time. Capital T is the period of the oscillation. If you substitute this result in the differential equation and you remember how to take second derivatives of cosine functions, you will immediately find that the period is 2 pi divided by the square root of c. c has to be a constant, that's essential. So let's now go to our problem of the oscillating rod. You see the rod here, it's oscillating about point p. The distance from p to the center of the rod is l over 2, because the length of the rod is capital L. The angle here I have chosen to call b, most books call it theta, but I called it b. And then the force at the center of gravity down is capital M times G, acceleration due to gravity. So in lecture 21 of 801, you will find that I alpha, I is the moment of inertia, in this case, the moment of inertia for rotation about P times alpha, which is the second derivative of the angle. We call that therefore the angle acceleration plus the torque relative to point P is zero. It is a restoring torque. That's why we have a plus sign here. So the moment of inertia for oscillations about P of this rod is one third ML squared. You can look that up anywhere on the web. You can also derive it for yourself. And then the second derivative of the angle in our case will therefore become B double dot. The double dot indicates second derivative in time. The torque is mg times L over 2, but don't forget the sign of B because torque is a cross product. And so you must take the angle into account. In this case, there's the sign of B and that is zero. If you now massage that equation a little bit, you get rid of your m's, you always do, you lose an L. And if I write it down in the most simple form, which reminds you of this form, then you will get this equation. B double dot plus 3G over 2L times B is zero. And lo and behold, that will then immediately give you that the period T is 2 pi times the square root of 2L over 3G. All right? Many of you have this correct. More than many of you don't have it correct. Some of you have a capital M in the equation. That cannot be. You may remember from your high school days that whenever you have any pendulum oscillating in gravity, the mass is not in the answer. The period does not contain a mass. Some of you have an angle in there. Well, that's a little bit bizarre too, because clearly the period for one oscillation is the same for all angles because we use the small angle approximation. And therefore, there cannot possibly be an angle in capital T. Let's now go to the example of my rod, the rod that I showed you last time when I posted the problem. The length of my rod is 1.055 meters with an uncertainty, my guess is about three millimeters. Since that is a error or an uncertainty of 0.3%, which is very small, in the final result, the error will only be not 0.3, but 0.15% because of the square root. <laughs> Think about that. L is under the square root, so the 0.3% error will become 0.15%. 
So I substitute L in this equation and I use for G 9.81 and then I find that the period that I predict is 1.682 plus or minus 0 0.003 seconds. I estimate roughly that my reaction time is about 0.2 seconds, 2 tenths of a second. I have measured uh, 10 periods several times and every time that I measured it my result for 10t is within 0.2 seconds the same. I list here only one result that 10t is 16.9 plus or minus 0.2 seconds. I divide by 10 and what do I find? That the period that I measure is 1.69 plus or minus 0.02 seconds. And now compare this one, which is the predicted one, with the measured one, and that's a beautiful result. All right, if you have followed this very closely, then clearly you should try to solve the next problem, which I will post within a week, which is substantially harder than this one. If all this is too much for you, this is really at the heart of the physics, of course. If this is all too tough for you, then don't even try to solve the problem that I will post next. It's perfectly okay if you don't. I prefer that you don't than that you keep throwing uh, incorrect uh, answers to me. Okay, so if you want to take the next problem seriously, I really suggest that you look again at my lecture 21801 and that you will then recognize the method which is here applied to a rod. A solid rod oscillating about point P. All right, yes, 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 of course, we are still friends. Have a nice day and take care.